Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Liu, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm talking about planet classification, a great suggestion by Wiki Leeds. So let's start. Our sun is just one of at least a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way alone. Each one of these stars will have a planet, if not even many planets. There are so many planets out there that it's hard to believe that we would be alone in this universe. For this reason alone, it makes sense to look for planets like our own. So when it comes to exoplanets, planets outside of our own solar system, we can categorize them into four main categories. Terrestrial planets are Earth-sized or smaller. They're made up of rocks and metals. Our inner solar system planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all terrestrial planets. Super-Earths are another interest for the search of extraterrestrial life. These planets are rocky, but are larger than Earth. They're smaller than Neptune, however. Gas giants, as their name suggests, are mostly gas and, of course, giants. They are comparable sizes to Saturn and Jupiter, or even larger. Unlike our outer planets, most gas giant exoplanets have been hot Jupiters. These gas planets orbit close to their star where the temperatures can be extremely hot, thousands of degrees Celsius but it's because that they orbit so close to their star that we're able to find them so easily with traditional exoplanet detection methods. Neptune-like planets are gaseous planets. They're made up of mostly helium or hydrogen, but then with a rocky core. They are typically the size of Neptune or Uranus. Now previously on this channel we have talked about how to find these planets, but how do we go about classifying them once they've been found? It turns out that size and mass play a crucial role in determining a planet's type. The size of an exoplanet can come directly from the transit method that is used to find exoplanets. Recall that this is when the exoplanet orbits a star, the light curve of that star dims as the planet moves in front of it, obscuring some of that star's light. The larger a planet is, the more light will be obscured. So the drop in brightness is therefore given as the ratio of a planet and star's radii squared. The mass of an exoplanet is typically measured using the radial velocity method. So when a planet orbits its star, it will cause the star to wobble. And the amount of wobble is related to the ratio of the planet and star's mass. For a given star, the more massive an exoplanet is, the more it will make that star wobble. Mass affects pretty much everything on a planet, like whether or not it has plate tectonics, magnetic fields, and whether or not gas escapes from its atmosphere if it has one. So it's really important. Then with both size of the planet and its mass at hand, we can calculate the density of a planet. And this is what tells us what a planet is made up of. Is it rocks or is it gas? It also gives us clues about if the planet has an atmosphere. Even better, if you know the orbital radius of a planet, in other words, the distance it orbits its star, you can figure out whether or not it's in the habitable zone, the region where liquid water can exist on a planet's surface. If it is, then there's a small possibility it could support life. Currently, we know of 4,516 exoplanets, but of these, only 60 are confirmed to be potentially habitable exoplanets. That's all for this week's video. Let me know below what you want me to speak about next time. And in the meanwhile, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.